Hello everyone, my name is Decker Link, the trained on professional, and welcome to Black Gate. On the last episode, a bang! And now we start this episode off with a bang! Fuck! If I remember correctly, this is going to be the episode where we fucking die. And we happened in a long time, but before we get to that, I have an important question for fans of this series. I have an idea on how to approach this game. Since this game very much interweaves all of the characters uh, up uh, until a very like a certain point in the game uh, and there's a lot of fucking characters some of which have passed some of which don't I wanted to ask uh, if this idea would be an idea y'all would support the idea I had is to take one character from each of the career paths that means one for the construction, one from the library, one from the bar. I think there's one for the police station too. I don't remember. Um, and then of course you have your Andrus route. So that'd be five paths from one game. Um, and the reason I was considering doing this is so that we can get some different fucking games on this channel. I've been itching to play Angels with Scaly Wings for a long time, and I've got a lot of different games I want to play. But none of these games are going to be fucking done. <laughs> and I, I don't want to take up the entirety of a game uh, and put it on here uh, I, so that no one fucking takes the initiative to download the game just because they've seen it on here. Um, so what I was thinking is for the games that have a smaller ensemble, like Repeat, um, even extracurricular activities, I was considering not doing Chester and Dozer, but... Uh, people seem to really want me to do those, so that I haven't seen anyone cry out for a character in this game other than the ones I've done and Longba. <laughs> but um, so I was just thinking I would do the that that way I would do one character from the construction route, which uh, I would take suggestions on. Ultimately, I would wind up choosing whoever. But uh, I'd probably steer closer to the ones that people say that I, they want me to try. Uh, I think I did that for Vincent. People were like, oh, you should try Vincent. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. But bef you know, obviously I have to get through Alan's route before I can do that. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, that way we can get some new fucking games on this channel. Something that... I desperately want, and I feel like every time a new game pops up, everyone's like, Oh, finally, a new game! Good lord! Uh, so, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, that would affect this series. Major Minor is pretty straightforward. Uh, extracurricular activities, I'm going to do every character, because that's pretty... They're, they're laid out pretty uh, thoroughly. It's like, you choose your character right at the beginning. You choose who you're going with right then and there. Um, and then... Um, repeat only has three fucking dateable characters, so that's pretty easy. So, uh, that would really only affect this game for now. I don't know how it would affect for future games, but for this one, I kind of want to do that. Uh, and unless there's a very strong opposition to that, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but you got plenty of time before I get to that point, because I got to fucking, uh, get to that. <laughs> I got to fucking get past Alan's route first. Um, because that was, so that would eliminate Longma and Kitako. Oh no, people weren't looking for Longma, they were looking for, uh, Kitako, uh, route. But that would get rid of their routes, and maybe I go back to it later, but I wouldn't make it a priority until much later on. Um, when, like, more of the game is done. But anyway, so that's just an idea. Let me know what you guys think. Let's get on with the fucking episode. Bang! I'm startled awake and instantly grab the fire poker. I sit up too fast and my head is pounding. Damn it. I can hear the wind blowing through the cabin. I turn on the light. I can get against the wall near the door. I slowly open the door and I peer through the crack. Down the hall, by the front door, I see a large dark figure with glowing red eyes. They are not reflective glowing, but actually glowing. The figures seem to blend in with the dark. It is difficult to discern what is shout and what is the thing, although the shine of a large, sharp blade hanging... Yep, this is where we die. We've been through this shit before. I'm ready for it this time, motherfucker. You ain't surprising me this time. Pretty damn clear and intimidating. Well, we tie to talk, defend, attack. We know what's gonna happen. Just fucking attack the shit. 
Fear builds up on my body and I explode with energy. I burst open the door and charge at the figure. As I get close, I can see it resembles a grim reaper and I go to stab it. This is to no avail as there is physically nothing for me to strike. It retaliates, lifting the blade and bringing it down. My training kicks in and I block the blade with a fire poker. The swing is with so much force that it knocks me away and I drop my weapon. It floats closer to me and I stumble backwards as another swing takes out a picture and, ch and a chunk of the wall, sending splinters and glass f flying. I retreat back to the bedroom and grab my phone. Um, well, Vincent, uh, we know nothing's gonna happen. Calling Alan won't help, Cody won't help. Gruff, we called last time, so let's call Vincent this time. Call Vincent's phone, I talk in a whisper. Vincent, Vincent, please respond, hell, please. Vincent picks up, I can tell by his annoyed tone. What? Vincent, oh damn, thank you. There's something in my cabinet that has a knife, and I have no idea what it is. Oh damn it, why are you calling me? I'm calling the police, and they will be right over. Hide, run, fight, do whatever you can to stay alive. I put down the phone and hold onto the fire poker. I have view of the door and a window to my side, just in case I need to get out. Cuts and blood loss are still better than death. I sit paralyzed, looking at the door for any movement or noise. I stay perfectly still for what seems like forever. I can feel my heart pump, and I can, and, and I count each beat like it's my last. I hear a car, cars actually, coming up to the cabin. There are lights and a makeshift red and blue flash that I'm familiar with. But I'm still not moving. I see flashlights under the door, hitting and searching things as uh, boots enter my cabin. I hear, Zack! Zack! I'm in the bedroom! Okay, stay there! We're looking around! What the fuck was that? Okay. Boots move across the cabin, opening and searching everything. My door handle is turned, but it's locked. I finally move from my huddled position and get up. My legs ache uh, from being so tense, but I make it to the door and unlock it. I open it, and standing there is Gruff. It's not Gruff. They can change their shape, motherfucker. I try to say something, but as I can, I feel tears me tears me under down my face as the knot of pain in my throat stops my words. Gruff looks concerned. It's not something I've seen. My vision grows fuzzy and dark like as if a Tetris piece fills up and you lose. I feel my legs lock and feel my throat vomit up a liquid that tastes like copper and iron. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and skip. We've seen this. We've seen this. We know what happens. Let's see what happens if we talk to Jack and Plux. Hello. I'm visible like a Christmas story cliche. Okay, so nothing happens. Ah, fuck it. And we're awake again. We can sit up like some Frankenstein monster come back to life. Now, last time it happened like that, we were with Vincent. So we don't know who's going to come to save us this time. Um, reality hits like a truck and my eyes are met with that light, fluorescent light that's stinging the pain in my body. Let's see who comes to our station. Here comes Vec. Oh, you awake. How you feeling? Sore. My head is pounding and I feel like Frankenstein. What happened? Vec grins. Well, they are looking for the outsider, but that should not be your concern. It is too soon if they will find it. No, I mean me. Vec has the same grin as I squint my eyes in pain from the throbs of blood rushing in my brain. What's up? Piggy and I talked, and he's willing to forgive you for your outbursts. He's here for moral support. <laughs> what the fuck are you keep trying to pass off Piggy on me? I'm not trying to pass up. It's what Piggy wants. <laughs> he wants to be there for you. We had to have a lot. He was inconsolable. <laughs> Don't you understand? When you were in here and you were like, oh, he can support my dick in his mouth. He was very scarred for that. He's just trying to be a good friend. And you're being a consistent asshole. It's me. You apologize to Piggy. <laughs> Oh, for fun. In case you guys are wondering who we're talking about, it's Piggy. Is 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 fucking little pig? <laughs> Student money management from Wichita University. Yeah. Got that at the thrift store, didn't you? No, he's a student debt piggy. Stop! Stop being mean to him. He's trying to get our finances in order. <laughs> you over here being a jerk. Can you? The slit at the top of his body is. Filled, we can't put any coins in them. It's stretch marks. He's had kids. <laughs> He's had kids. You know what? It's transgender. I'm done with you this stop. conversation. I'm done with this conversation. You know what, Piggy? Come on, we're gonna go eat. Over oh, fuck! Leave the fucking pig. <laughs> what do you want? 
I'm going to get ice cream now! Have fun! With all this emotional trauma... Christ! ...that puts me through day after day... Uh-huh. Like, that's totally not fucking reversed. I might make some coffee! It's fucking one in the morning! Yeah, it's perfect time for coffee! Fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot! Oh, Alan came in! Yay! You're alive! Even in my dazed state, I can smell the alcohol in his breath. Yeah, I'm alive. I was waiting outside when Vec told me. His big dog ears flatten and stick outward like airplane wings. Oh, I probably should have called him. I thought he would have been asleep. A big goofy smile on his side displaces all the stress in his posture. Alan is smiling. It's sweet. Now we get to party. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. I literally died. I literally was sliced open. What's wrong with you? The smile is replaced with his grin as he takes a big swig from the bottle. His big clumsy hands, paws, whatever, shove the bottle into my chest. He nearly knocks me off the cart. Fuck it! Take a drink! You've been through a lot today! Grab the bottle, you're not living if you can't celebrate. Bring the glass room to my lips and tilt my head back. Nothing. It's empty. It's empty. <laughs> Jesus. You shouldn't be drinking anyways, at least not yet. We can't have a good time properly in this place. Too many creeps watching, unless you're into that sort of thing. Because if you are, then just, no, 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 I'm just not feeling well. Vex and I might have a hypoxia or something. Well, we better get your blood flowing, if you know what I mean. God damn it, right back to the dick jokes. Did you expect anything less? Not really. I'm just happy you're good. Thanks, me too. I'm not 100%. I'll make you feel 100%. Give me some time to heal first. I think I should be pushing things. The door opens again, and standing at the door is a demoness. A succubus with auburn hair. Real knockout. That's a real knockout? Mm, looks, uh... Looks, uh, looks like Michael Jackson. Yet, here I am, naked on a cold cart with nothing but a blanket covering me. You'll heal just fine. Hello, nurse. <laughs> That's a reference. He gives extra stress to this hello, and then lets it drag out. I think I've heard this before. Nice to see you too, Alan. I didn't think I was your time. Even if you were, you'd probably just blow me off. Not in a good way, either. She looks a bit flustered. I'm not here for flirting. That's a shame. Let me guess, you're here just to say, oh, we did everything we could? Alan is mocking and intimidating the demoness. Yes, I, I was a miscommunication that led to Zack being attacked this evening. This falls onto my shoulders. I warned the relocation committee that the cabin is a liability and unsafe for citizens. However, they did not listen. Yes, I know. I've gotten your spiel before about the cabin. Really? You know its history better than most. If you have the time to explain all the details to Zack, it would be greatly appreciated. We have other matters to discuss. She looks to Alan, and then he nods. I know a case of citizen relocation when I see it. So then, you know what comes next. Where is he going? I was hoping you would take him in. She flips through a folder. Our dossier notes that, you t uh, that the two of you have developed an initial connection. Your personalities are compatible. That only thing re the only thing remains is your consent. You don't need consent when I'm drunk. It's always a yes. <laughs> then it's settled. <laughs> Jesus. She signs the document and hands it to Alan. He scribbles on the page and drew a penis. <laughs> he belches up the potent smell of alcohol and he hands the documents back over. I'm not dumb, but I need confirmation. I'll be living with Alan? Oh, that oh. Smells so good. You're really making coffee right now? Yes. Babe, you're gonna be up until like fucking nine in the morning again. It's my life! It'll be you and me. Don't worry, all my T's are crossed and I's are crossed. <laughs> Alan's been around the block a few times. He has a comfortable understanding of the bureaucracy at work. You wouldn't have guessed it, but a lot of our procedures are his handiwork. You can say that again. Handiwork? What? No, I kind of stopped listening after being in, around the block a few times. Man, Aradina Ar Ar rolls her eyes. Zach, you're free to go. Please make sure he makes Alan. Please make sure Alan gets home. Please make sure he makes Alan gets home safely. Wow, that's words. That's words, all right. Shouldn't he be making sure I get home safely? Oh, well, I'll make sure you're to be your service dog and lead you back home like a good boy, as expected. Good night, you two. Aradina turns on her heel and leaves. 
Well then, stud, how about you and me make like a tree and fuck? <laughs> I don't understand this man sometimes. <laughs> he tugs at my sore arm and I hop off the metal cart. I hold onto the cloth covering me. Can I at least get dressed now? Do you have to? Yes! Fine. Alan sulks away like I stole candy from him. Finally get dressed and head out of the police station. Well, at least we didn't get attacked this time. Find Alan waiting for me. There you are. How you holding up? Your legs working all right? He says in a slight slur, his own legs look like they're made out of putty. To be honest, everything hurts right now. I hope to make everything feel. I hope to make everything feel better. Come on, stud. We slowly walk towards Alan's apartment. I have a difficulty keeping, uh, difficult time keeping up. It's not that I'm not capable, it's that I'm out of breath. I guess that means I'm not doing so well. Alan pushes his head under my arm and I lean on him. He takes almost <sighs> all of my weight and we trek on our way forward. It must be that he's too drunk or doesn't know how much strength he's using. It begins to rain just as we pass Alan's pee spot. Like, a, like walking a dog, he goes and does his business as I wait patiently against a wall. It gives me a moment to rest my body and I feel the pain that racks it. My dog crutch, my dog crutch returns and we continue on. The hallway air is musky and humid from the rain. I got the keys ready. Alan unlocks the door and lets me in. He takes me to the bedroom and sits me down on his bed. He stumbles his way over next to me and flops down much too hard. I'm surprised the frame hasn't snapped. Mmph. The drunk dog slurs so much that I can no longer understand him. It doesn't matter what he's saying, he's insistent in staying as close as he can to me. His large hand tugs at my clothes as he tries to get up on my lap. In typical canine fashion, he thinks he's much smaller than he actually is. He fills off my shoes, socks, pants, and shirt. He leaves me in my underwear. I don't really complain. Do unto others in the golden rule. I go to speak. I want to talk about everything. What it was that attacked me, why I'm here, what all this means, when I can go home. Alan stops me. He hushes me, and his large fur finger pressed against my cheek and then over my lips. His aim is way off. Now's not the time to talk. Now's the time to party. Why? Because you're alive and well. Isn't that enough for celebration? For Alan, I bet even small victories are enough to celebrate. He buttoned his pants. Celebrate. He took a shower. Celebrate. He drank a whole bottle of beer. Celebrate. Just put your legs up and relax. You deserve it. Reluctantly, I put my legs up and lay down on the bed. The sheets, the sheets weren't the cleanest, as expected. I shut my eyes and hear the dog, wolf, whatever, rummaging around. Alan comes sliding into the room, and he's just in his underwear. He lays down next to me, and I gently pet his fur. The fluff around his ears are soft. Thank you for letting me stay with you. There's no response. I look at his face, and his eyes are shut. He's fell asleep. Which one of us had the tougher night? I managed to get up the blank. I managed to get the blankets up over him, and I rest my head on a, on a, on a lumpy pillow. As sleep begins to rip me away from the world, I feel a heavy arm wrapped around my belly. The hair is warm and tickles my skin. I am tugged close against the big wolf, and he mumbles to himself in his sleep. He must be dreaming. Something about his something about this is comforting. It shouldn't be, but it is. I find sleep just around the corner. That's the whole day? That's the whole fucking day? <sighs> or night, I guess I should say? Fuck. Well, night six. I wake up to the rain. It gently stirs my mind awake. My body stretches out the pain. The, muscles, the sore muscles still clamped in my body. I shift against Alan in the large pool of jewel against my shoulder. I'm clutched tight like an important blanket. I try to roll away, but his arms are locked closed. I wait for a bit, hoping that his grip loosens. It doesn't. Of course it doesn't. I poke and prod the big dog awake just long enough for him to press his wet nose into my neck. The cold sends a shiver down my spine and goosebumps scatter across my skin. Alan, can you let go? An automatic response is mumbled out. I'm back in a bit. I didn't answer anything. Alan, come on, wake up. I don't. His eyes finally slip awake, and he realizes what's going on. He yawns right in my ear. His hot breath wafts over me. Morning breath. Hey there, stud. How'd you sleep? I guess all right. Shouldn't we be heading to the bar? Just all right? Another yawn escapes his body. His whole frame expands against me. 
We should sleep some more then. I'm too awake now. I need to take a shower. It's the pain, the slow throb of hypoc whatever. My muscles coming back from the dead. I don't think last night did me any favors. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. His heavy arms lift the like gates and I finally breathe fully. I sit up and crack my back. Each pop makes my ear his ears jump. His feet touch the gross floor. My feet touch the gross floor and I hesitate. Like jumping into a pool, I walk to the shower and Alan follows close behind. I enter the bathroom and he's still right on my heels. He reaches in and turns the water on for me. I step- everyone has the same shower, apparently. I step in and he steps in with me. I never asked him to join me. The water rinses the fluids, pain, and sweat, and sleep from my body. Suddenly the water stops and the big canine sticks his head under the water. <laughs> it wets down his fur and the water trickles down, making rivers in his fluff. I get secondhand water, which isn't desirable. With Alan in the shower, I can't quite think to myself. It's invasive, but different. We take turns washing and cleaning. It's far more soothing than I would have expected, given I'm taking a shower with a werewolf. I wash his fur, which takes an entire bottle to achieve. I use a small amount of soap against my flesh. I was always jealous of the furless types. You don't know the pains it takes to wash this much fur. I chuckle and we finish showering. Alan stands in the tub and uses a rigged setup of nearly four hair dryers to air blast his fur dry. He uses so much energy that the lights dim and nearly off. Dim to nearly off. We get dressed and prepare to eat. Jesus. Oh, for fuck's sake. In the kitchen, all the counters are covered in empty to almost empty bottles of beer, liquor, and mixed drinks. The tiled floor is sticky in most spots. Thankfully, I'm wearing shoes, since I knew the state of affairs of in, this play, in this place. Alan goes up to the stove, which also is covered in bottles of beer, and with a sweep of his arm, pushes as many bottles as he can into a garbage bag. A cascade of glass and aluminum would, could wake up the neighborhood. I sit at the wobbly table and have to clear off a spot for my breakfast. Alan cooks a modest meal. I didn't think I'd have to work a double. I've not been the best at keeping up with cleaning. I prefer to things to get messy. Aha, I get the joke. Something is off, though. His tail is lower than it usually is. Oh, jeez. Now I'm making the double entendre. Now I'm making the double entendre. Everything all right? You don't seem to be as perky as you usually are. You noticed, huh? Sue's funeral is tonight. I didn't want to drag you into it since you're all, you've already been through a lot. Alan grabs his for his breakfast a bottle of something. I mean, him drinking. I, I mean, saying something could mean that you're just considering. You know, you're being considerate of him. You're not telling him how to do anything. So just say something. It's a bit early to be drinking. Shouldn't you eat something first? Eh, you're right. He pours himself a bowl of kibble and milk. It looks just like cereal. Cereal is quite possibly a human kibble since it's everything you'd ever need. He munches and cracks the dried bits in his molars. When is it? The funeral? In a bit, I think. There's a general time for those kinds of things and you just get used to the timing of it. You also get used to going to them. Is it truly that dangerous here? He just looks at me with a shocked look. Did that thing sap your memory as well? Are you feeling alright? Do I need to give you a checkup or something? I get it. I guess it is that bad. He's right, though. I did kind of forget the whole dying and coming back. It hasn't really sunk in at all, but maybe that's not the point. After we head to the bar and grab some needed pick-me-ups, I'll have to lay you back down and remind you you're still living after the funeral. Should I go to the funeral? Does, did he mean a lot to you? Yeah, if you want to go. I think it means a lot to have a big funeral. I doubt he had many friends at the end there. He made more enemies than friends, and, even, and he even embarrassed me. You embarrassed? His shoulders slightly shrug. It's kind of embarrassing what he did for me. How so? Sooth was a matchmaker. He was always good at getting couples together. He could predict the future, and only as far as two creatures getting, but only as far as two creatures getting together. He hooked you up with someone? Uh, yeah. There's hesitation. Alan shifts his eyes away to a mostly empty bottle. He not so stealthily dodges the question by picking it up. 
Come on, man, you barely ate. Who? His name was Fluoros. The tone in his voice says it all. I'm sorry. Fluoros passed away a long time ago. I've had enough time to recover. Sure doesn't seem like it. If Sooth was a matchmaker, why did he say that I was the hope of the town? That doesn't seem like something a matchmaker would say. Because he liked to play games. He said I would meet my love and be happy. I'd also meet the best of friends and the best of enemies. He said I'd get all of this if I went to the library that one night. Was it true? The friend and enemy certain were certainly true. Gruff is a great friend and Vincent is a waste. But being happy, I won't lie, it was tough. Sooth told me he lied. After everything that had happened, it was all a lie. He fiddles with the bottle in his hands. He lied to me, Vincent, to the town. What lie? He never could see the future, and it was all just a giant joke to him. Vincent kicked him out of the library because of what happened. I motioned him to continue. I'd rather not. Tonight is going to be rough as it is. Rough, hard, and a pain in the ass. His devious smile creeps back across his face, hiding the, hiding the sullen truth. Ah, uh, let's not push him. He's already... It's, it's morning. He, he's already feeling rough. Let the topic go. If he doesn't want to answer, I shouldn't stick my nose where it doesn't belong. He lost Sooth, his partner, and now his new friend almost died. Am I just a friend, though? Take your time whenever you're ready. This kind of stuff is best left buried. You keep those dirty bones on the ground where they belong. That doesn't sound like a healthy way to deal with loss. However, it's how some come to terms with things. Terms with things. It takes them a while and they dig it up a bit at a time. Just know that I'm here to help and listen, and I'll listen. At least someone in this place will help me. My only good friend up until now was... Hops. It was Hops. That's not even capitalized, is that a name? But it seemed my luck has changed. He takes a sip from the bottle. I've got two friends now. He doesn't drink all of it. He puts it down on the counter and we get ready to leave. I'm going to stop it here. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Black Eight, ladies and gentlemen. On the next one, uh, we'll probably go to Sue's funeral and get the note again. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the trained of professional speaking for the voices in my head when I say until next time. Fairly well. Bye, everyone!